welcome to the next lecture on basic operation of a computer. So, um, the basic mechanism through which an instruction get executed shall, shall be illustrated and just recall that what we discussed in the previous lecture. Your ALU is having some registers, some registers are called special purpose registers and some are general purpose registers. And firstly, what we will do, we will discuss some function of special purpose registers. So, what I said is that your instructions and your data are stored in memory and from memory you have to bring the data and the instruction to the processor and then you have to execute it. For this purpose, we require two special purpose registers. They are called memory address register and memory buffer register. So, let us see first what is memory address register. So, memory address register holds the address of a memory location to be accessed. So, when I say that it holds the address of a memory location that is to be accessed, that means I can access a memory location for reading an instruction. I can access a memory location for reading a data and can I can also access a memory location for writing back the data in. So, memory address register holds the address of the instruction that is to be read or it holds the address of the data that is to be read from the memory or the data that is to be written into the memory. The next register is called memory data register. Memory data register or MDR holds the data that has been written into memory or will receive the data been read out from the memory. So, when we write, we always write a data into the memory, but when we read, as I said, I can read an instruction or I can read a data. Okay. So, this memory data register will contain the instruction that is to be read from the memory or the data that is to be read from the memory or the data that is to be written into the memory. It can contain any of these three. Now, you can see this that addresses it is spanning from 0 to 1023. So, the number of memory locations that we can address is from starting from 0 to 1023, 1024 memory location in total. So, a memory considered as a linear array of storage locations, bytes or words each with a unique address. So, th these are the addresses of this memory location where it is incremented one by one and it has got 1024 locations. Now, what I am trying to say is that this memory address register will hold one of such address that is either 0, 1, uh, 4 or 5 or anything 1, 0, 1, 1 anything and memory data register will hold the content of this location. If it is 5, whatever content will be there in that particular location that will be there in MDR. Now, just see this diagram shows the connection between processor and main memory. So, I talked about MAR and MDR. MAR is memory address register and MDR is memory data register. Memory address register is connected with primary memory through address bus. Memory data register is connected with primary memory through data bus and some control signals are also required. So, why a control signal is required? So, when I say that uh, this particular data will be read from the memory or this particular data will be written into the memory. So, 
you need to specify that information to the memory that from this particular location I need to read a data or from this particular location I need to write back a data. So, these control signals are for that purpose and the data that is, so you will provide first the address in the address bus that hits to the pre main primary memory. Then we provide the control signals either read or write. Depending on that, that particular value is read from that particular address and it comes to MDR or if I want to write a value, I have to put that value in MDR and the address where I want to write in MAR and then I activate the write control signal and then what will happen? Whatever data is in MDR will be written into that particular address which is in my MAR. So, this shows the connection between your MAR, MDR these two registers with your primary memory. So, as I said this slide will summarize it to read the data from memory what we did? We first load the memory address into MAR, then we issue the control signal that is read, then the data from memory is read and it is stored into MDR. Now, to write into memory what we were doing? As I said, we have to load the memory address into MAR. The data that is to be written must be loaded into MDR and then we issue write control signal. So, for reading these are the following steps that are required and for writing these are the following steps we have to issue. Now, for keeping track of the program, what I said like let us say this is my memory and these are some locations. So, this is say 100 location, this is 101 location and in these locations we have some instructions. Now, suppose you are executing at this particular location, how will you move to the next location? Because you have to execute these two set of instructions. So, for that reason there must be some counter that will point to ok. Now, this counter there must be some counter that will point to location 100. So, you will go to location 100, you will fetch this instruction, execute this instruction, then your counter should automatically increment to 101, such that after executing this instruction, you move to the next instruction and execute the other instruction. So, now we see for this purpose, we have two special purpose registers, one is called program counter PC that holds the memory address of the next instruction to be executed. Automatically it is incremented to point to the next instruction when an instruction is being executed. So, PC holds the memory address of the next instruction to be executed. So, once we read that instruction, execute that instruction. PC now must point to the next instruction that I have to execute next and so on. So, when I ex take the next instruction, read the next instruction, the PC will automatically increment to the next one and so on and so forth. Next another instruction is the instruction register. So, now you see in this diagram, uh, when I say that this is the location, so PC your program counter will contain the location 
from where I have to read the instruction. Now, I have to read this instruction and store it somewhere. Where will I store it? I will store it in a register known as instruction register, where this entire instruction add r 1 comma r 2 is stored. So, this register instruction register temporarily holds an instruction that has been fetched from memory. Now, once an instruction is fetched from memory, you need to decode that instruction. See, we, uh, we understand this is add, but a computer is a layman. So, you have to instruct the computer, okay, do this, do that, then only the computer will do that. So, when I say that add r 1 comma r 2, so add is an instruction saying that add the content of register r 1 with R 2 and store back in R 1. This is my instruction. So, the instruction needs to be decoded and then the computer must understand, okay, now it is the add instruction that you have to perform on the two operands and the two operands are R 1 and R 2, execute that and then store back the result in R 1. So, the instruction register temporarily holds an instruction that has been fetched from memory, needs to decode to find out the instruction type and also contain information about the location of the data. So, where this, so when I say that uh, I R contains this particular instruction. So, after we get this instruction, we need to decode to know, okay, this add is add. And we also need to know these locations of these R 1, R 2, these registers. So, ultimately after decoding we will understand this add R 1, R 2 is nothing but some bits of 0 and 1. Okay. If a total of 16 registers are present, then we can, we need 4 bits to specify a register and we can just name that R 1 is a 4 bit register and it is represented by 1000. We can also say R 2 is another register which is represented by 1001 and add is the opcode and your opcode has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, 6 bit opcode and this particular opcode represent your add. So, and ultimately the set of instruction is nothing but bits of zeros and ones. So, we will see this in near future. Now, we can see the architecture of an example processor or in other words we can say that how memory is connected with the processor. So, this is a processor where we have some special purpose registers MAR, MDR, PC and IR. We already know the functions of these registers. We have some general purpose registers and we have control unit and ALU. Now, what is the function of this ALU? When I say that I add R 1 comma R 2, R 1 and R 2 are registers that are present inside your processor. So, these registers we need to bring to ALU. So, R 1 must be brought to ALU, R 2 must be brought to ALU and then the particular instruction like add or mul whatever is there, we need to uh, that particular operation needs to be performed on those R 1 and R 2 and we get the result. So, this is an architectural, this is an overall example processor how it looks like, but there will be many more things that we can see what happens in inside a processor. Now, uh, we shall illustrate the process of instruction execution with the help of following two examples. So, the two examples that we will be taking the first one is 
add R1 comma LOC A. What does the first instruction will do? Add the content of memory location LOC A with R1 which is within a processor some general purpose register and we store back the result back into R 1. So, the result will be R 1, it will be R 1 plus content of location A. Location A is a location in memory. So, this is your memory and this is some location is location A this content of this will be added with R 1 and stored back in R 1. The next one is simply add the two registers that is R 1 and R 2 both are present now in your processor and store back the result in R 1. Now, let us see how we will execute this instruction. So, we have to do some assumption here as I said that uh, firstly when we say this instruction, this instruction is stored in some memory location. We assume here that my instruction is stored in location 1000 and the initial value of R 1 is 50 and location A value is 5000. Before the instruction is executed, PC contains the value 1000. Now, the content of PC is transferred to MAR, why? Because we need to read the instruction. To read the instruction from memory, what I said earlier that the address needs to be loaded in MAR and we need to activate the read control signal. That is what I am saying is before uh, the content of P C that is 1000 now should be transferred to M A R. Then a read request is issued to memory unit. After the reading is performed, the instruction is in M D R and then from M D R it should be transferred to IR instruction register and while doing these steps, we have to increment the PC to point to the next instruction. As I said, computer is a, it, it, there will be a sequential execution of instruction and the instructions are stored one by one by one. So, here first PC was pointing to 1000 we fetch the instruction from location 1000 and then the PC should point to the next location that is 1001. So, PC will now point to the next location which is 1001 and next whatever instruction that we have read from memory is loaded in MDR and from MDR it will be transferred to IR and we know after it has come to IR the instruction needs to be decoded and then it has to be executed. We will see step by step how it happens. So, from this we can say that firstly P C value is transferred to M A R, read signal is activated. From this M A R content the value is the whatever uh, instruction or data is there it is read and it is stored in MDR. From MDR it is transferred to IR and at the same time P C is incremented to 4. Okay. Why we have said here 4? It is depending on the word size. We will be coming to this little later, uh, but it depends on what will be the word size. So, I will just explain it once. Let us say uh, a computer it will be a byte addressable thing. So, let us say if this location is uh, 2000 and the next location is 2004. That means, we are using a 
32 bit machine and the PC is incremented by 4. If it is a 64 bit machine, the PC will get incremented by 8. So, here the PC is incremented by 4, so it is a 32 bit machine. Now, once the instruction comes to IR, it needs to be decoded and executed. Let us see how it is done. Now, location A is for example, it is 5000, it is transferred from IR to MAR. So, uh, if you, you consider this uh, same instruction that is add R 1 comma location A. Now, this is in IR, this instruction is in IR. After decoding, it has understood that one of the location, one of the operand basically is your memory location, is a memory location. If one of the operand is a memory location, then you have to read this particular operand, the data which is there in this particular location from the memory. So, what has to be done? If this has to be done, then again you have to bring that operand thing into MAR then activate the read control signal, then the data that is present in this location LOCA that is 5000 will be read and will be transferred to MDR and from MDR now the MDR contains one of the operand and R 1 contains one of the operand. These two will be brought into your ALU will be added and store back in R 1. So, these are the steps that we follow to execute the instruction add R 1 comma location A. In this instruction, how many read operation we have to do? The first read operation we perform to fetch the instruction and after decoding, we again see that one of the operand is a memory location. So, we again have to read that particular location from the memory. We again read that particular data from that memory location, we execute the instruction and store back the result. So, two read, two memory operation were required in this particular instruction. Let us move on with the next one. So, these are the steps that are being carried out and these are called micro operation. We will see in more detail later section, but just to see first PC's value is transferred to MAR, then whatever value of MAR is read from memory and it is stored in MDR. Now, from MDR the value is moved to IR, the PC gets incremented to point to the next memory location. If we have to, there are some operands that is to be read from memory, then it has to be read and then transferred to MAR and then from MAR, it uh, from the memory, it is read, it is brought into MDR and finally, now all my data are present in uh, processor, both R 1 is present in professor, processor. After reading MDR, uh, the data of LOCA is also present in MDR. So, both are processor register, we need to add this and store the result in R 1. So, whatever I have explained is there, PC contain this value, MAR contain this value, PC get incremented, it points to 1004, then MDR initially contain add R 1 comma LOCA th that is moved to IR then after decoding LOC A value will be in MAR, the data will be read and location A's value is 75 which is to be which is stored in MDR and finally, after adding this the value of value these two values are added and it is stored back in register R 1. In a similar way, let us see execution of 
another instruction that is add r 1 comma r 2. Here you can see that this instruction both r 1 and r 2 are processor register. So, you need not have to bring anything from memory. So, both the operands are present in your processor register. All you need to do is that you have to read this particular instruction from the memory and then you will execute this instruction. So, assume that the instruction is stored in memory location 1500, the initial value of R 1 and R 2 are 20, uh, 50 and 200. Before the execution P C contains 1500 and then the content of P C is transferred to M A R. We activate the read control signal, the instruction is fetched and it is stored in M D R. Then the content of M D R is transferred to I R it is decoded and then finally, the content of R 1 and R 2 that is 250 is added and stored back in uh, stored back in R 1. So, these are the steps that is shown P C will contain 1500, then M A R will also contain that P C will get incremented by 4 and then the entire instruction is brought into M D R. I R will also contain this instruction, this instruction will now get decoded and the value of R 1 and R 2 will be added and will be stored back in R 1 that is 250. Now, coming to the bus architecture. So, uh, we were discussing about how an instruction will get executed. When we, when we say that processor is a module, memory is a module, input output is a module. So, all these are communicating between each other. So, they need a pathway, communicating pathway to communicate between each of these functional units. So, the different functional modules must be connected in an organized manner to form an operational system. By bus, what we refer is to a group of lines that serves as a connecting path for several devices. So, the simplest way to connect all these is through a single bus architecture, where only one data transfer will be allowed in one cycle. For multi bus architecture, parallelism in data transfer is allowed. So, let us see this. So, this is a single bus that we can see, where all our modules memory, processor, input and output all are connected to a single bus. So, if the processor wants to communicate with memory, it has to use this bus and no other modules will be using that at that moment. In the same way, if from memory something needs to be outputted, so no other modules can communicate this is the bottleneck of a single level bus. So, this is a single level system bus. Now, coming to uh, the system level two bus architecture. In this two bus architecture, what we can see is that um, there is a bus dedicated to processor memory and of course, the I O processor is also connected to it but for input and output there is a separate bus and this bus will be communicating with the I O processor in turn and the I O processor will then be communicating with the processor or the memory as and when it is required. But we have a bus, we know that most of the communication takes place between processor and memory. So, when there is more communication between processor and memory, then we must have a bus dedicated for this. Now, this is a system level bus. Now, we can also see a bus that is required within the processor. Within the processor, we have seen that there are many components, many transfer that is taking place. That is when I say that the value of M A R will be transferred to uh, from P C, the value will be transferred to M A R. Then we activate the read control signal. So, whenever I am moving some 
register value f within the processor. So, we also need a bus within the processor. So, in that bus there are some um, features, ALU and the registers are all connected via this single bus. The bus is basically internal to this processor. So, I am talking about a bus which is inside the processor. So, typical single bus processor architecture is shown in the next slide. So, let us see what it is having. So, this is a internal processor bus. So, all these things are inside the processor PC, MAR, MDR, Y register is there and then ALU is there. These are some temporary register Z, Y and these are some general purpose registers. IR is also there and there is a instruction decoding and control unit. So, whatever information is been transferring within all these, if I have to transfer a data from R 1 to R 2 or I have to transfer a data from P C to M A R or I have to transfer a data from M D R to R 1 or R 2 or to A L U. So, how they will be communicating? They will be communicating through this internal processor bus. Now, multi bus architectures are also there. So, modern processors use this multi bus architecture. So, within your processor to communicate between various registers, you have multiple bus. What is the advantage you get? You the advantage that we get is that more operations can be performed. We get results much faster. So, there will be a overall faster instruction execution and it is advantageous to have multiple shorter buses rather than a single long bus. So, some smaller parasitic capacitance can be there and hence smaller delay. So, uh, we have come to the end of lecture 2. So, in lecture 2 what we have studied is how an instruction will actually get executed, how different processor registers, how various registers that are present inside the processor communicate between each other and finally, how we can increase the performance using either single bus architecture or multi bus architecture.